Hello everybody, welcome to Tom's Garden. It's now July. July the 2nd today. These are the plug plant, plug plant tomatoes that I bought from plug plants. They're so high. And these are the seed tomatoes which I've grown from seed. Now there's not a big difference in the height, but there's a big difference with the production of them. I don't know if you can see those from there, but I'll show you we'll have a look, closer look in a minute. Those are the tomatoes on this side. All looking nice and healthy. And there's one or two over this side. And everything in the garden is looking rosy. So let's have a look round. So from where I was, on my left hand side, the seed tomatoes. There's just one or two of them. see the flowering everywhere but there's only that couple of actual fruit or the start of fruit in. There's another one here and another couple there. But if we look on the other side everywhere we look we've seen tomatoes. So that's the difference. So maybe it is worth spending the extra money on getting plug plant tomatoes and uh, make some seed ones as well and see what happens. But the race is not over yet. We've still not had eatable tomatoes from any. So we'll keep looking back and see which is best. Now another thing you must do with tomatoes is give them some some room because a lot of these leaves they're just leaves there's no tomatoes on there so I go around and I cut them off where I, where I can do but you don't cut anything off that has um, there's flowers on because that's where they're going to grow because they need the room they need the space between for um, for breathing another surprise for this year was these poppies uh, I never planted any poppies so these have been carried in by either birds or they could have been in the compost that I bought. I don't know but that was a, a pleasant surprise for me that because I like poppies, everybody likes poppies. I don't know what these are called, these are another wildflower that I grew one year and it drops its seed in the ground as it's, as it's fading so they grow for next year as do these they produce a lot of seeds and drop them in the ground and they just come back again next year there's some more of them well, in this pot here we have sweet pea now sweet pea is one of my favourite flowers and they climb and they got a brilliant fragrance with them lovely those are some wild flowers I'm not sure what they're called but they're like buttercup types another sweet pea there's a sunflower and it's almost ready for opening another sweet pea in this corner and another sunflower that's not ready for opening yet the head's forming on that one I particularly like sunflowers because bees love them uh, this guy keeps on a guard keeps all the menace out I'm particularly happy with the baskets there again they've been grown from seed just buy a basket put some compost in a few seeds and that's what you can achieve uh, I have a few of these They're looking good now. And all different types of flowers down there. Now the trouble with the um, the dry seasons that we have is the grass doesn't get as much water as it wants. So you get these grey patches. And the only thing you can do about that is uh, use a sprinkler. 
but that's you know that's for drinking really and I don't use it you can't fight nature my view just let nature happen the grass will come back you don't need to worry about the grass the strawberries are doing well Guess what's going on with that? Good guess. And the peas are formed, but they're not filled out yet. So we've got to give that another couple of weeks before we get the peas out. Right, so that's early July in the greenhouse, and it's good night from me, and it's good night from me. I'll see you in August.